Our text today holds several stories and sets the stage for the events ahead. We begin with the story of Mary anointing Jesus's feet with a costly perfume. It's a vulnerable and courageous act. It's an act of service. And then there is Judas, whose verbal expressions pretend to care for the poor, but is really just an act of hypocrisy. We already know Judas has chosen to move with the status quo to betray his friend and savior. This opening scene sets us up for the rest of the story of what lies ahead, the choices that lay ahead, acts of courage or acts of fear. Acts of love or acts of faint heartedness. In the second storyline, Jesus had just performed the most unimaginable miracle. He had raised Lazarus from the dead. In a grand display, Lazarus, Lazarus rose up out of his tomb, still wrapped in his burial clothes. Lazarus was alive again. And the chief priest's response, kill Lazarus. I believe that most acts of violence, hatred, bigotry, poor decisions, and irrational behavior stems from one very primal emotion, fear. At the core, we are driven either by love or by fear. And the chief priests had much to fear. They could lose control of their people. They could be faced with changing everything they knew and did. They could face retribution from Rome. If Lazarus' resurrection was causing so much turmoil for them, it seemed to them that the obvious choice was to kill him dead again. And then there is Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Everyone was on their way to Jerusalem to prepare for Passover. Passover was a very important holiday commemorating the exodus out of Egypt. God liberating the Israelites from the hands of their oppressors, promising them new land and a new way of life. The city would have been exploding with tens of thousands of people. And as with any big event, especially one that commemorates a liberation, reinforcements had to be brought in to keep the peace. Governor Pilate had already done this, bringing in more military troops and making his way into the city to keep any riots at bay and to instill peace. We may not realize that that first Palm Sunday, Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was not a risk-free palm party. It was a protest parade, a protest against those in power, a parade to prepare the way for a different kind of king. And this was all happening with plots to kill Lazarus and to kill Jesus, building in the background. The crowds were brave to show up that day. And Jesus drew on courage to face his journey to the cross. Oh, what choices lie ahead. Acts of courage or acts of fear. Acts of love or acts of faint-heartedness. What's interesting about John's gospel is that John invokes a scripture from Zechariah regard, regarding Sukkot, or the festival of booths. In this context, this parade would have been reminiscent of not only Passover, but of Sukkot as well. Now, Sukkot commemorates the years that the Jews spent in the desert on their way to the promised land. 
The week-long festival celebrates the growing season, the harvest season, and the gift of life itself. In practice, Jews make and live in a Sukkot, a flimsy temporary hut with a roof of palm leaves. Spending time in a fragile hut was a reminder of living exposed to the world without a nice comfy shell. It is a reminder that there is only one real source of security and protection, and that is God. Sukkot is about understanding the fragility of life and giving thanks to God for being alive. All of this would have been part of the undercurrent of meaning making on that day. Sukkot is the very symbol of fragility, the very thing we face when moving forward with courage. Jesus was staring his fragility in the face as he entered Jerusalem, and he pressed on with courage to the cross. As humans, we're always navigating this spectrum of acts of courage or acts of fear. It is a conscious choice that we are always making. The crowds that first Palm Sunday made a conscious choice to show up. They were shouting Hosanna, a word that literally means save, rescue, savior. They were excited. They were all in. They were courageous. They believed that Jesus was the Messiah. And they were there to help usher in a different kind of king and a different kind of kingdom. And yet, just a few days later, so many made a conscious decision to move from a place of fear. That same crowd that showed up to the protest parade, courageously shouting Hosanna, were now shouting crucify him. How, how does that happen? Because I know that every day people are out there making courageous decisions. People are standing up to their supervisor to do what is right. People are taking responsibility and accountability for their actions. People are making the courageous choice to die with dignity or choosing to face with courage the diagnosis of cancer. There are people out there choosing to get help for their alcoholism, people willing to step into discomfort and vulnerability, knowing that there is great risk. And yet, in less than two weeks in our country, we have had two mass shootings. Just yesterday, a Henrico family lost their daughter to gun violence. Some call it a return to normal after our year-long lockdown. And again and again, we are outraged. And we exclaim that our hearts go out and we hold the victims in prayer. We cry out, save us, rescue us. Each time this happens, conversations arise for a few weeks about some kind of rational, common sense gun violence. And it gets discussed, and then it gets voted down. This time, the conversation barely happened at all. What happens when salvation is right at our fingertips? And yet the acceptance of it is too terrifying because of the new task it would call us to. As humans, we're always navigating the spectrum of acts of courage and acts of fear. It is a conscious choice that we make. This morning, we wave our palms in an act of courage. 
We want to usher in a new kingdom. We want justice for all. We want people to have employment and a living wage. We want people to have access to health care. We want our schools to be safe so our children can learn. We want people to thrive. We are so in it. We are so behind you, Jesus. But what conscious acts of courage will we be willing to make as we get closer to the cross? Little does this crowd know, and little do we Christians realize that building God's beloved community takes risk. It takes courage. Choosing to walk in the ways of Jesus takes courage. As New Testament scholar A.J. Levine writes, choosing to walk in the ways of Jesus means being willing to accept hardships and loss, humiliation and imprisonment, even death, in order to proclaim a vision for a better world, a divine kingdom, and then work for it. She continues that the triumphal entry cannot be separated from the cross, and the cross cannot be separated from the call of justice, and that call cannot be separated from risk, personal, professional, or permanent. Accepting salvation takes courage. Moving toward the cross takes courage. What happens when salvation is right at our fingertips? Yet the acceptance of it is too terrifying because of the new task it would call us to. In the words of Henry Nouwen, it is shocking to see how many people choose the certainty of misery in order not to have to deal with the uncertainty of joy. Moving through Holy Week, what acts of courage are we willing to engage in order to bear witness to the good news? Amen.